Hi and welcome back and welcome to lesson three. Well, this lesson is going to focus on narrative text which can be found in section A on unit two. Now, I hope you spent 10 minutes writing your notes about the, uh, the phrases that I've lifted from this the text, text which we'll look at afterwards. And uh, all we're interested in really is it's not whether the ideas are right or wrong, is that you are just exploring the words and what they mean. Now, to me, words can have a surface level meaning uh, or they can have possible underlying meanings, which gives us an impression of, in this particular case, of a character. OK, let's have a look at the, uh, the character's name. The character's name is Daddy Gobsek. Now, let's have a look at the, uh, the word daddy. What, what does that mean? Well, it, it, it's, it's a term used by young children, but it's also a term used, I guess, for uh, that I've heard it used by adults too as well, daddy. Uh, but it's always used in a kind of loving way. So it suggests, does it not, somebody who's loving, who's generous, who's... Uh, protective, uh, who is caring. Now that brings us on to gobsec. Gobsec. Well, um, it doesn't sound like a British name. It sounds like a foreign name. It sounds almost like as if it's split into two words. Gobsec. Gobsec. How does it sound to you? Does it, does it sound like a lovely sound? Does it sound like a, a positive sound, a negative sound? Well, uh, to me, when I think of that first syllable, the sound gob, uh, it reminds me of spit and something that is um, disgusting, despicable, um, uh, bad habit. Uh, sick uh, almost is like sick, um, waste. Uh, something that isn't uh, pleasant. So putting them together, I I would be baffled anyway by the word, uh, the words put together, daddy gobsec, but all will be revealed later. Now, uh, interesting phrase is he turned himself into gold. Well, most students, most students are going to stop there and say, well, he doesn't literally turn himself into gold. But I might say, hmm, on one level, you, you could say that, couldn't you? Because he, he is somebody who could paint, uh, paint themselves gold. I've seen it done, you know, for fancy dress parties and, uh, I don't know, um, choreographed dance movements where, where dancers have even... Uh, painted themselves gold so you can uh, literally turn uh, yourself into, into gold but it, does it mean that um, it may have uh, other meanings um, turn himself into gold in in the sense of uh, become extremely wealthy uh, turn himself into gold uh, and then you you get deeper philosophically himself his human self into gold, into some sort of metal, uh, to become almost inhuman. But nevertheless, inhuman, a person that would in some in some way be uh, regarded maybe in a positive way as, as precious, as I've said before, wealthy. Right, let's have a look at the last one then. And it is motionless as a statue. Well, you've probably worked out it's using as, and it's a simile. Just as he turned himself into gold could be a metaphor. All right, the important point, the, the message I'm getting across is not necessary always to say, look, it's a simile, it's a metaphor. It's about the exploration of these words. Now, motionless as a statue. Well, literally, again, it could be that capability of being perfectly still. But then you might want to think about uh, the statue. I mean, I guess it depends on what type of statue it is. 
I mean, it could could mean that it could mean that the uh, person being described is beautiful. It could mean the opposite, depending on the on the statue. It could mean similarly as gold, I guess, is the human changing into some inanimate object, and inanimate means inhuman and therefore unemotional, without emotional, without emotion. Um, without those other important emotions such as love, care um, and respect. Okay, now I think it's time then we have a look at the, the real text. Now I will tell you of course uh, taking these words out of context does skew meanings. So, let's have a look. What impressions do we get of Godsack? Explore what the writer says about Godsack and how he says it. Now, just before answering that, I'll, I'll read that extract and then we shall have a discussion of some of the ideas and some of the words in the extract. One evening, I went in to see this man who had turned himself to gold, the usurer, whom his victims, his clients as he styled them, were wont to call Daddy Gobsack, perhaps ironically perhaps by way of antiphrasis. He was sitting in his armchair, motionless as a statue, staring fixedly at the mantel shelf, where he seemed to read the figures of his statements. A lamp with a pedestal that had once been green was burning in the room, but so far from taking colour from its smoky light, his face seemed to stand out positively paler against the background. He pointed to a chair set for me, but not a word did he say. What thoughts can this being have in his mind, said I to myself. Does he know that a God exists? Does he know there are such things as feeling, women, happiness? I pitied him as I might have pitied a diseased creature. But at the same time, I knew quite well that while he had millions of francs at his command, he possessed the world no less in idea. That world, which he had explored, ransacked, weighed, appraised and exploited. OK, I hope you've had a good look at it and uh, enjoyed it as well and um, got the impression that I did and of course it is a negative impression because we're, we're even told at the top is that these money lenders were and or this particular money lender is unpopular so let's have a let's have a discussion well we could discuss perspective and it's written from uh, the first person right and it's using the word I now, clear, clearly the person writing it is a client of this uh, loan shark, this money lender. Um, we get the impression, of course, is through the writer's creation of this first person character, is that this man is clearly insensitive and despicable. He tells us the meaning of daddy. Uh, because it's not daddy in a positive sense. So he says it is used in antiphrasis, which means the, the opposite. So we know that he is uncaring, unloving, insensitive. We also know, look, looking at perhaps now in context, uh, context that he turned himself into gold, uh, so we could say, obviously, it's a, it's a metaphor, the writer's using a metaphor, but also to express his 
life's worth, if you like, is all he thinks about is wealth, acquiring wealth. And gold stands for that. And in acquiring wealth, he loses himself, his, his, his humanity. The usurer. Well, even the word usurer is an old word. And um, it's used in a negative sense as a, as a kind of loan shark that's, that charges exorbitant interest rates. So the word is used, for example, to describe Shylock in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. So it already has those deep meanings. Okay, now we go to, into a description of him as... Uh, motionless as a statue. This man in this room, this smoky, seedy room, that gives us um, a sense, if you like, of uh, a criminal um, atmosphere. Uh, threatening as well. He doesn't speak, he points. But like a statue as well. The statue uh, I guess it's not beautiful, but again, it's a statue of stone. This is a man that's cold and feeling. Later, of course, we could explore the idea as well that the, the statue, uh, almost or gobsex, seems to be pitiable since he is inhuman, maybe isolated, uh, disconnected from humanity because he has another idea of life. Uh, that he thinks this is the all-important thing about life and obviously has, has missed that, dare I say, Christian or human ethic um, that perhaps the most important thing is love and consideration and respect for others. Uh, the room, of course, uh, reflects the kind of man he is, it is smoky. Interestingly, the things in it are even tarnished. Um, you know, it could also suggest, couldn't it, is that he, despite his wealth, lives in some sort of squalor that he doesn't want to buy new things or have new decorations. Um, he's got basic lighting, it's smoky, it feels dirty and grubby and then of course to end the end the um, paragraph we're told that he's paler against the background paler and perhaps he's drained of blood drained of life perhaps like that statue so there's lots of descriptions of him to show him as insensitive and inhumane and also the fact he doesn't say a word he may he cannot make sensitive communication with others. The last uh, paragraph focuses too on um, his thoughts, not, not that he's a, uh, just that he's a ruthless and despicable man, but he feels sorry for him. Um, and he says, he, like he would pity uh, a diseased creature, um, as though uh, he's describing him obviously as hum inhumane as, as a creature, but somehow he's missed the point of life, uh, and therefore he is uh, pitiable that he cannot engage in those wonderful human uh, emotions that I've already described. But at the same time, I knew well that while he had millions of francs at his command, he possessed the world no less in idea. Yes, he's missed the point. He's missed the point of life. And uh, it ends with this wonderful, again, the technique of listing verbs which shows you how ruthless uh, and determined this man has been is to just explore becoming richer at the cost of, of, of humanity, really, uh, and at the cost of, of great um, 
misery to other humans. He had explored, ransacked, weighed, appraised and exploited. Well, we could go through those, those words about uh, exploring, exploring what, exploring deal, deals, weighing them up and it's purely been for profit. It doesn't really matter about uh, human happiness, just profit. Uh, so his world has been about exploitation. Now, the next slide I've got for you is a question at the top, but also gives you some helpful hints how to answer this question and achieve close to the 10 marks by making your points, keeping to PQA, but the whole point of this lesson, look closely at those phrases and words and try to explore those underlying messages and meanings. Have a go. Just finally to say my next lesson is going to be on descriptive writing and sentence building, which is going to be important for Unit 2, Section B. Okay, tune in for that. Also, I would love to hear some feedback from you, either a thumbs up or a comment to tell me how I could improve the lessons. But I really do hope they are beneficial. See you soon.